from fish to eels to sea spiders. We've got a whole bunch of strange, creepy, and downright bizarre creatures to talk about while we cover the top 10 terrifying deep sea creatures that came straight out of a nightmare. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the stargazer. These fish are absolute nightmare fuel despite their nice little name. Their eyes are located on the tops of their heads, which is what gives them their name, but they have this strange little habit of burying themselves in the sand with only their face exposed before suddenly leaping out in order to catch their prey. These guys are also a venomous fish, and if this wasn't enough, there are some species which also have an electric organ. Because they have the ability to camouflage themselves and ambush predators, and can deliver both venom and electric shocks, they have been called the meanest thing in creation. In our number 9 spot today, we have the flying spaghetti monster. I know it sounds silly, but I swear this creature really does exist. This deep sea creature is a species of siphonophore that can usually be found in the Atlantic Ocean. While these guys appear to be one organism, they are actually a colonial organism, which means that they are composed of many, many medusoids and polypoid zooids. Zooids are multicellular units that develop from one single fertilized egg, and they combine to create functional colonies like the flying spaghetti monster. In our number 8 spot today, we have the wolf trap anglerfish. This is a species of anglerfish that is usually found in the deep waters just off of the coast of Mexico. While all anglerfish look pretty strange, these guys just might take the cake on the weirdest looking fish in the angler family. These guys were actually discovered quite recently, only a few years ago, and this, coupled with their deep sea habitat, means that a lot of information about them remains a mystery just waiting to be uncovered. Like other angler fish, these guys also have the bioluminescent lure that is used for attracting prey. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Pacific Viper Fish. The Pacific Viper Fish can be found at different areas in the ocean depending on the time of day. They usually like to stay in the bathal zone, which is about a thousand meters to 4,000 meters below the surface of the ocean, but during the nighttime, they will sometimes rise up into much shallower water because there is more food for them to eat. It's easy to pick out which fish is a viper fish because of the fact that its jaw is sticking out forward, and then it has those extra long pointy teeth. The Pacific viper fish is predatory and mostly eats other fish, but will also chow down on crustaceans, plankton, and shrimp. This fish can grow to be about one foot long and are considered one of the most aggressive fish for its size. I know it's only one foot long, but hearing how vicious it is coupled with how ugly it is, and I really just don't want to be anywhere near this thing. One cool thing about this fish though is that they have what is called ultra black skin, and it reduces the reflection of anything that is illuminated around them so that they can camouflage themselves easier in the darkness of the deep sea. In our number 6 spot today, we have the sea spider. Okay. If you're like me and don't like the spiders that exist on land, unfortunately this one isn't going to be up your alley. Sea spiders are giant, and they like to suck the life out of their prey. Yeah, how terrifying and honestly gross. They basically just latch onto their prey for dear life and suck out all the fluid they possibly can. They are gross, but they technically aren't actually spiders. These guys have a leg span that is comparable to some of the largest land spiders, but the things with these guys is that they carry their organs in their legs because, I mean, they're basically all legs. The good news is that they prefer really cold temperatures like the ones in the waters surrounding Antarctica. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Atlantic Wolffish. Okay, these guys are named due to their teeth, and honestly, you can totally understand why. On both the upper and lower jaw, they have six sharp and strong teeth that honestly would freak anyone out. Because of how strong their teeth are, they tend to eat hard shell creatures like crustaceans and mollusks, and they also are important to keeping the sea urchin and green crab population in check. The wolffish like to stay mostly in one area and tend to live in near freezing temperatures. They have a very cool feature though. Because they live in such cold temperatures, they have what is basically just antifreeze running through their bodies so that they don't freeze up. Even though they look super creepy, I have to admit that is pretty sweet. In our number 4 spot today, we have the fang tooth fish. The fang tooth fish has a mouth full of razor sharp teeth, perfect for clutching just about any size of prey in its jaw. That's right, any, any size. They live in the deepest parts of the ocean, the deepest having been recorded at about 16,000 feet. That is, until they just so happen to feel like migrating up to the surface for a little vacation. Unlike a lot of other deep sea dwellers, fang tooths do not have any bioluminescent organs to attract their prey. 
prey. But that is because they're not the sit and wait kind of predator, and instead they seek out their meal using their excellent sense of smell. They're more active than most deep sea dwellers and heavily rely on any light that may seep into their dark home. In our number three spot today, we have the deep sea lizard fish. Deep sea lizard fish are a small family of deep water fish who are related to the telescope fish. These guys have flat heads and curved barbed teeth, and they grow to about 78 centimeters or 31 inches in length, which makes them a pretty moderately sized fish. They prefer to stay at depths of 1,600 meters or 5,200 feet, and they are actually one of the world's deepest living apex predators. These lizard fish are known to eat anything that comes their way, including other fish of their own kind. That's messed up. Despite the lack of light in the depths of the ocean, these guys have large eyes and pupils, and their vision is actually really important for their prey detection, as well as their well-developed eyes that allow them to see any residual or bioluminescent light. Not a lot is known about the reproduction habits, but one thing that is known is that the deep sea lizard fish have both male and female reproductive organs, which is thought to be an adaptation to low population density. In our number Number two spot today, we have the faceless cusk eel. Anything that's called faceless certainly can't be good, and this eel is absolutely no exception. These guys. They don't have a face, and they honestly look like the dementors of the deep sea. The first time one of these was found was in 1873 when oceanographers aboard the HMS Challenger discovered it, but for a century, no one else really came across one of these guys. Perhaps it's because they like to make their home in the icy waters located about 13,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. Just a few years ago when these guys were sort of rediscovered, one of the leaders of the expedition, Tim O'Hara, told the Guardian that, quote, it looks like two rear ends on a fish, really. Apparently the mouth of these guys sits underneath its body and can extend out to catch food before disappearing back inside its own body. So that's kind of gross, kind of cool. In our number one spot today we have the hagfish. There are about 76 different species of hagfish and some of them are known to live as deep as 5,500 feet below the surface of the ocean. While the hagfish isn't particularly the best name, they are also known by an equally disgusting name of slime slime eels, and this is because their body produces a sort of goop that is used to ward off predators. This slime that they release has recently been found to impair the function of a predator's gills, so it seems as though it's a pretty effective shield. Aside from this defense mechanism, if their slime doesn't work and they find themselves still caught in the grasp of a predator, they can sort of tie themselves into a knot in order to escape the clutches. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski. I'll see you next time. Next time, bye.